one message that I want to start with, and I'm going to speak to each one of you, and I'm going to speak to your heart. I want you to say to yourself from this day forward, I give myself permission to do something extraordinary on planet Earth. I give myself permission to do something extraordinary on planet Earth. For it is my destiny. So often, we compare ourselves to other people. and judge ourselves in comparison instead of judging our own actions to our inspiring dreams. And we sometimes assume that we're supposed to be somebody we're not. And we live in the shadows instead of on the shoulders of giants. as individuals and as an entire profession, we deserve to be on the shoulders. We have to give ourselves permission to do something extraordinary on planet Earth. Every individual lives by a set of priorities, a set of values, things that are most important to least important in their lives. Whatever's highest on our values, we spontaneously are inspired from within to fulfill it. We can't wait to get up in the morning and fulfill that. To this day, I really believe that the greatest marketing tool we ever have is an authentic and inspired mission that's clear. Whatever's highest on our value the ancient Greeks called the telos, the end in mind. All other activities in our life are ultimately means to that end. Napoleon Hill called it the chief aim. One of my mentors in my 20s, Ed Tellison, called it the magnificent obsession. The thing is so magnificent in your heart that you're inspired and can't imagine doing anything but that. The telos was so important to the ancient Greeks, they made a study of it. And they called it teleology. Jim Parker, for many decades, taught the science of being naturally right, teleology. Teleology stands for the study of meaning and purpose. When we live congruently and in alignment with our highest values. Not only are we inspired to get up and do and fulfill that, but we feel it's the most meaningful thing, the most inspiring thing, the most magnificent thing we can do. It's our purpose. Our purpose, when lived congruently, initiates an expansion of who we are. Every time we set a goal that's aligned and congruent with the highest value, the telos, our space and time horizons expand. Our vision becomes crystal clear. The primary thing that stops us from living by the telos is that subordination to outer influence. That's why one of the great philosophers said, I'd rather have the whole world against me than my own soul. Your telos is the direct line to the soul, the state of unconditional love for your life, because when you're doing what you really love every day and you're inspired by it, you feel grateful and you have grace and you're inspired. And every human being on the planet is magnetically attracted to anybody who's exemplifying this authenticity. Our patients are magnetized 
through the science of being naturally right when we're authentic and congruent and we're inspired and clear on our mission of service. In the book of Wealth by Hubert Hal Bancroft, he, he mentioned three great principles that stood for the greatest wealth in the world, the individuals, organizations, and institutions that achieved great wealth. And one of them was that they felt by divine providence and human sovereignty that they were destined to serve vast numbers of people. When a person is living congruently with what's truly meaningful to them, they automatically expand their space and time horizons. They automatically are service oriented. They automatically look for challenges because they can embrace support and challenge equally in the pursuit of their purpose. And they love tackling the challenges of making a difference in the world serving people. And they have a yearning, almost a, a feeling of impossibility not to make the difference a destiny factor when they are automatically congruent. So if we allow ourselves to do something extraordinary on planet Earth, and we allow ourselves to be authentic and not subordinate to the outer influence, every time we set a goal that's aligned with our values, we have the highest probability of achievement. Our identity revolves around that highest value. And we achieve, and every time we achieve, we give ourselves permission to expand a, a greater achievement, bigger in space, bigger in time, until our vision goes beyond our local community, to our city, to our state, to our nation, to our world, and beyond. And the greater our vision, the easier it is to manifest our outcome. I've said on this stage many times, if we want to make a difference in ourselves, we have to have a vision at least as big as our family. We want to make a difference in our family, we have to have a vision as big as our community. We want to make a difference in our community, we need a vision as big as our city. We want to make a difference in our city, we need a vision as big as our state. We want to make a difference in our state, we need a vision as big as our nation. If we want to have a national influence, we need a global vision. And if we want to leave a global impact on this planet and leave a legacy here that's an immortal legacy, we have to have an astronomical vision. We have to be a celestial soul looking down on a terrestrial mind and go do something extraordinary on planet Earth. I was in Tokyo recently. And I met with a gentleman who took over his father's company manufacturing clothes. And he was inspired and built, felt he could do something even greater with his, the company. And now he's taken it to be the largest manufacturer of clothes in the world. And I had a meeting with him because he's incorporating some of my methodologies throughout his company around the world. And he was telling me about his mission. And when he shared his mission, he got tears in his eyes and you could see it in his eyes. His global outreach with his clothes was because his mission did not have hesitations. The cloudiness of our vision is based on all the injected values of others we subordinate to. When we stand on the shoulders and there's no subordination, we see our vision. Our vitality in life is directly proportionate to that vision. But every detail left out of that vision because of the injections becomes the obstacle and challenge we face in the manifestation of that vision on the earth. But he manifested a global impact because he was clear. I've been asked in leadership conferences, is there something that we're born with or something we can develop? The answer is both. Many people have the potentiality of great leadership, but because they subordinate to so many outer influences, they don't give themselves permission to be authentic and they don't set goals that are really truly them. I had dinner with a gentleman, Bill Pollock, who owns Drake International Corporation. He's in his late 80s now. He, he told me at a French restaurant in Sydney, Australia, he said, in 1951, I opened up my business and that was the last day I ever went to work. Because once I found out what my calling is, it's never been work. I can't wait. As Warren Buffett says, I tap dance to work. This gentleman does not look his age. 
You get a timeless mind and ageless body when you become present. And you become present when you're inspired and living congruently with your highest values. You don't notice time and space. You're present. Jim Parker used to call present time consciousness. You're grateful. He, he used to call that approbation. You're in the love concept. You love what you're doing. And you have certainty because you're not wavering with outside influences. You're coming from within. It's a very powerful state. Peter Lynch used to be with Fidelity. He said there are four things that are common to great companies. After he did his technical analysis and fundamental analysis of companies and looked at book values and price earnings, etc., he would go and visit the companies that he thought had merit and he would look for four things. He looked for people who worked in the company who were grateful for their job, loved what they were doing, inspired by the vision, and enthusiastically working. This is called engagement. Nobody goes to work for the sake of a job. They go to work to fulfill their highest value, their telos. And anytime they can see that whatever they're doing is helping them fulfill their telos, they're inspired at work. They're creative. They take ownership of the job. They come up with solutions. You cannot stop a company from growing. You can't stop a practice from growing the second the people are with those four states. They're grateful for their job, they love what they're doing, they're inspired by the vision, and it's clear, and they know what they're dedicated to, and they're enthusiastically working. Time times intensity gives results. The more intensely they focus, the more they cluster their activities, the more empowered they are, the more powerful that magnet and attracting naturally right patients. I've had my stinking thinking, ingratitude attitude in my office, and I've had people dissipate. And I've also been on track and on tar target and on tune and on time and focused. And I've seen the telephones ring and people come in. The universe rewards authenticity. The universe rewards congruency. I've asked millions of people in speaking around the world, how many of you want to make a difference? Every hand goes up. Even in prisons, they, they have this. Governments. Our hierarchy of values are completely unique. So if we're living truly, authentically, and congruently with our highest values, there is no two people with the same set of values. So if you want to make the greatest difference, just be authentic to yourself. Mm -hmm.